All right, welcome back everyone to Ultra Config Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how to configure an IPv6 address on a Cisco router. We will be using a Cisco CSR1000V, but the configuration may be adjusted to work on any iOS device. So why should we learn this? Well, IPv6 is the future. Once you get a grasp on the fundamental IPv6 theory, it's time to begin working on the CLI. I'll go over the theory in a separate video. For today's post, we'll focus on the config. First, we will need to enter configuration mode on our router. Next, we will need to enable IPv6 routing on the top level of our config. Without this line of config, the device won't route any IPv6 packets. With that done, we are now ready to configure the actual interface. Before we do that, recall a typical IPv4 configuration like the one below. The IPv6 interface configuration will be very similar. Instead of using a subnet mask to specify the network portion of the address, we will use the prefix length notation. Before we perform the config, let's recall the basic structure of an IPv6 address. We have the global routing prefix, which is 48 bits wide, the subnet ID, which is 16 bits wide, and the interface ID, which is 64 bits wide. Let's now grab our interface config and paste it onto our router. You'll also notice that we didn't specify the last 64 bits of the address and instead added EUI64. This config option allows the interface to automatically assign itself a unique 64-bit interface ID. EUI is short for Extended Unique Identifier. It pretty much is an algorithm which simplifies the IPv6 address allocation process. Check out the IEEE standard to fully understand how EUI64 assignment works. I'll leave a link to it in the description. We may now verify that the interface address was correctly generated and assigned using an operational command. All looks well, the interface is up. You'll also notice that a link local address has automatically been assigned within the network FE80 slash 10, with the last 64 bits matching the interface ID of our global unicast address. Another point I must highlight, the EUI64 method of interface ID assignment is not mandatory of course. You can easily manually assign the full IPv6 address by omitting this option. I'll show that now by repasting the config, but this time I'll manually specify the full address including the interface ID. And there we go, no drama at all with this approach. One other point to note, if you want to ping the address you configured from an adjacent Cisco router, it's a good idea to use the IPv6 option in your ping command. For example, if you want to ping the address we just configured, run the command ping IPv6 followed by the address, like so. And there we go, all is working well. Before I end today's tutorial, I'll also shout out UltraConfig. UltraConfig is a powerful piece of software for automating the generation of network config. If you work in the network engineering industry, I highly recommend you to check it out. A link will be in the description. I'll also put a link in the description to a written form of today's tutorial for you to try it yourself. So that's it for today already. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.